so i'll be beginning with the constraint so constraint as it uh, says the name is sounds constraint to control anything right these are these are basically used to provide the validation on table or you can say this is maintain the integrity of data you want to restrict your data as per the definition you make so the definition says these are used to provide the validation on tables so that we can restrict the entry of incorrect values in the fields in a table right there are five type of constraints basically if we go by theory there are only five types but the sixth one which i have listed here that is default that is we use a uh, you can say on a large scale so the type of constraints primary key foreign key check unique not null and default so we'll be you know talking about detail uh, in detail about these things uh, so let's go the primary key primary key uh, this does not allow duplicate and null values so let us suppose for an example if we create a serial number column in a table right serial number column when i say serial number so it will have you know unique values for each row that will not get duplicate and it will not have null value so if we are creating serial number on any table that is called a primary key okay that is automatically a primary key but apart from serial number you can specify any value in the primary key uh we can take an example of employee employee table so if you have employee id over there so that employee id will remain unique for each student okay that employee id is the primary key in that situation so we'll be talking about more scenarios about the primary key and uh, if we go about uh, the foreign key then foreign key is nothing but the primary key of first table if we refer that key into any other table then it is called foreign key for table b okay so see uh, to make it clear suppose if there are two tables table a and table b and we have a primary uh, we have a employee id column in table a and table b both but in table b a uh, table a we say that employee id is a primary key so automatically that employee id column of table b will be called as foreign key so the definition says it is used to refer the primary key constraint of master table foreign key allows duplicate and null values see primary key does not allow duplicate and null but foreign key does so we use uh, now the third point which says that we can use on delete cascade during the creation of foreign key so that on deletion of primary key records the corresponding foreign key records get deleted automatically so we'll be doing this in practical we'll be writing a query and we'll be doing it in you know query and i'll show you that how exactly these things are implemented so the another thing is the unique key unique key is again the the column which i uh, told you the serial number column serial number column will remain unique all across but if i talk about a null value that is if null null value comes only once in a table then again that is also unique so there is only one difference between primary key and your unique key that primary key remains a uh, unique and there is no value no null values but in unique key you have unique values all across but it can contain null and when i say null it can contain null only once null will also not be repeated next time so that is the only difference between unique and primary key now check this constraint allows you to write any check condition on a column so when i say check suppose that i if i talk about uh, a department table right and uh, in department table there is a department column and you want only two values to be you know filled in over there uh let us suppose hr and finance so if you apply this constraint check constraint on that particular column department so user can insert only two values either finance or hr apart from these two if he will try to insert any other value 
he will not be able to do that. This check check constraint is to restrict the values. Similarly, you can put a condition. Uh, let us suppose there is a tenure or I would say salary, right? For a particular department, you want salary should, should be within this bucket. So you can specify that bucket into the check constraint. User will not be able to insert less or more value from that bucket. Uh, not null. This constraint does not allow null values, but allow duplicate values. So not null, we normally use that if you don't want any null values to be inserted in a column, you can use it. They, there can be duplicate values, but it will not be null anytime. So these are basically five constraints which we just talked about. Primary key, foreign key, unique key, check constraint, and not null. Now, all the constraints we just talked about, we have an example here. I'll you know just copy paste this over there into our SQL server and I'll show that how exactly this is going to happen. Okay. So before I you know run this query, I will I would like to talk about each and every statement, what it does and why we have done it. Okay. So it says create table and then we have account master. Right? So account master is nothing but we have taken a table name. Uh, let me use schema here, BBO, and then we have a column. Okay, then we have a column called account number. The data type I have taken integer, and after this, it would be looking normal to you because we have been doing it in the previous examples. But after this, I have put a word called constraint, and this is the name of constraint what I have given to my constraint. Uh, whatever I have just used. This is the name given by me. And I want this constraint to be primary key. So I have a specified a primary key here. Uh, the next column, what I have taken is name. I have specified the data type as varchar and length of 30. And I am specifying that it should be not null. So again a constraint which I have used that is not null here. Then the third column is account type. I have taken data type as CAR and length I have given 12. And here I am using a check constraint. What I am uh, specifying like account type, the same column, in saving or current. So by specifying this definition of check constraint, this account type column can have only two values, either saving or current. Okay? Now, uh, the third column which I have taken open balance, I have said numeric data type and again I am putting a check constraint here and I am saying that open balance, the same column, should be greater than or equal to 1000, means it cannot be less than 1000. If you will try to insert any value less than 1000, it will throw an error. Okay, now for my fifth column, employee, sorry, email ID. I have taken bar cash and length as 30 and I am specifying a constraint email unique. This is the name given to this constraint and what I am saying that it should be unique. So it is nothing but that unique key. We have one primary key in this, one unique key. This is the, at two places I have used check constraint and here I am using not null constraint. So if I run this query, Okay, let me select a database first. The database which I want to take is chapter 2 and let me run this. So, the command completed successfully. If I go to chapter 2, see tables, I have one table here, account master. Now, let me show you that how these constraints you can check into a table. How can you see that whether the constraint have been created or not. So to, in order to see that, I have just clicked Alt F1. I have selected the table name. Then I have pressed a Alt plus F1. So this is what I have got now. And it says that constant type, constant name, delete action. So you can see here, uh, there are four constraints created. It has not shown the not null here because not null it shows into the 
column definition only. So you can see in row number two for main malleable it says no. So that is why it is automatically shown here that main column is uh, not malleable. But rest of the constraints are shown here. This is the check constraint, this is the primary constraint and this is the unique key constraint. These are the names given by me and here I didn't specify any name so that is why it, is, it has taken system defined names. Now the definition which I put over there that is here that account type is equal to current or savings open balance should be greater than or equal to 1000. So this is how you know the definition of constraint you can check into a table. Now uh, let me insert some data into it. Okay. So the table has been already created. If I write select star from account master, you can see all the columns, but there is no values in it right now. So if you want to insert data into it, what exactly you can do it? We directly go here. See, by simply you can write insert into then your table name then you can specify all the columns in which you want to insert your value and then values and your values you want to insert. But there is another way to write this query. I'll just show you. This was the manually I have written it. But you can insert, uh, create this script by right click on the table name. Go to script table as then you have insert to and new editor, new query editor window. I, I will click on it you can see the query got created right now what you can do it uh, you direct you can directly go here into this query and put your values so for account number I will put 101 then at the place of name let me put John Then I will go to next row, account type. I will insert saving. Remember I put a constraint to insert only two values, either saving or okay. Now next I will go to open balance and I will insert a value, let's see thousand. Then I will go back to my email address. I will insert john at gmail.com. So for each varchar value, I have used single quotes. And for numeric value or integer value, I have not used those quotes. OK, so now my query is written. If I insert the value in it, if I run this query, it says one record affected. Now, at this query, I'm going to make some changes right now. Let me change the name first of all. I will say Ravi. Then savings, I will change it to savings. Okay. And if I run this query, uh, let me change the email address as well. I'll change it to Ravi. And I'll run this query. So you can see I've got an error. What it says, violation of primary key constraint constraint account number primary key cannot insert duplicate values in the object. So if by mistake or generally I try to insert the same value into the primary key, it won't let me insert the value because primary key says that it cannot have duplicate values in the column. Right? So I will have to change this. Number two. If I insert uh, this query now, again I will get some error. I'll show you what. So I have changed the account number, it means the same account number will not be inserted. Now next error which I have got, that says check constraint on account type. Okay, account type is to be inserted. One was saving and another was current. But at the place of saving, I am inserting savings. So this is violation of check command, check constraint. I will have to insert only saving or current. I cannot insert anything else. So if by mistake I will put a wrong spelling here, that will also be not inserted. 
Now, I'll be inserting this record. One row got affected again. Now, I'll insert the third record. Let's see, I will change it to RAM. I'll change it to current. Account, let's say amount I will leave it 1000. But I'll, I'm using the same email ID for RAM. If I run it, I'll get a next error. It says unique key constraint. Email unique cannot insert duplicate key in the account master. So you must be remember that on email address, I use unique key. So unique key specifies that again it cannot have duplicate values, but it can have null value. So if you want, I can insert a null value here or I will have to change the email address. So I will be changing the email address and I will insert the query again. So the record got inserted. If I go back to my query, previous query, like select star from account master, I will get three records have been inserted into the use or application of some of the constraint called primary key, not null. Okay, I will show you the not null, how that works. Check command and constraint, unique, unique constraint. Let's use one of the left one that is not null. So I'll again go to the same query insert and this time I'll put my name, okay, account number let me put 105 at the place of name. I'll leave it null this time. I'm not going to put anything. Account type I'll put as current. Open balance, let's say put 9, triple, triple S at the rate gmail.com. Okay. If I insert them, I'll get an error. It says table chapter 2, the table name column does not allow nulls. So at the place of name column, I use not null constraint. So if there is a null value, it will not accept it. So I will have to put some name here. Until unless I will not put name, it will not accept my record. If I run it again, you will get another error regarding open balance. Why? Because open balance, we put a constraint for greater than or equal to 1000 open balance. So I will have to put minimum 1000 here. Until unless I will not put 1000, it will not accept it. Here we go. So finally we have inserted some of the records into account master table. So we have seen that how to insert table, how to insert data into this account master provided the constraints which we have put. So basically constraint have nothing to maintain a integrity for the table or control the insertion of data that what kind of data we can insert into the table.